Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a review of the Sigma 35mm f2 Contemporary I Edition. Now, I is something new that Sigma is offering. It is a metal designed lens, it has a metal barrel, but they're much smaller and seem to be pretty darn affordable. Now, keep in mind this is an f2, not a 1.8, not a 1.4, and not a 1.2, but it is a super light, super compact designed lens for the Sony E mount cameras. Also, you can get it for the Mount Alliance. 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 Which means for you Leica shooters out there who want to cheap out because you just spent your entire paycheck or your entire month's paycheck on a body and you want to cheap out and get a lens, you could get this lens because it's inexpensive. It's $639. Now, when we get to the other lenses like the 3514 and the Sigma 35 1.2, we'll talk more about those prices to help you decide which 35 millimeter for the E mount or the L mount might be the right one for you. But before we do all that, let's take a look at the outside of this lens and it's oh so pretty. You're so pretty lens. You have an MF to AF switch right here, manual to autofocus. That's the pretty much the only switch that you have. You have your aperture ring right here, which does not have a lock and it clicks. There is no option to make it smooth that Rob Thomas is gonna be upset. He's gonna be, Steven, he's gonna be very upset that this isn't smooth. That's right, it clicks. Anyway, you have a metal lens hood up here. It's actually very nice. Clicks on right here, boom, on the front. Boom, like boom, I got it. And then when you're not using it, you bayonet it like this and then just, come on, man. And then you do, Jesus, Jared, I'm taking off all the caps. What am I doing? You put it right here. But I will just tell you this once again, if you're using this lens, take the lens hood off, reverse it and use it. Always use the lens hood. It comes in handy. It just should be used. It cuts down on extra glare. Now, some of you guys like flare, take it off. If you want that lens flare, take it off. That's, that's for you to figure out. I personally wish that there was a lock on this lens, but for the price and for the value that you're getting with something like this, I don't worry about it at all. 58 millimeter filter thread. So you have a 58 millimeter uh, lens cap. The 65 millimeter F2 Contemporary Eye has a 62 millimeter lens cap. But something interesting, it comes with a magnetic lens cap. Watch. Now it's magnetized right there. It's not going anywhere. I'm still not sure why you would use this, but you have that option if you want to use the magnet versus using this. Maybe they could have saved some money by not giving you this and nobody would have ever known, known any different and you'd be like, cool, I, I, don't, I don't want that. But you know what is cool? If you would give this video a thumbs up, because I would appreciate it, it helps us. It tells that algorithm that you like our content. So please, you know, like it and subscribe while you're at it. Now this lens has nine aperture blades and if you're somebody who's snobby and you want 11, you can then go ahead and get the 35 F 1.4 because that has 11. Do you need 11? I still don't know, man. Nobody's gonna tell you the difference between nine blades and 11 blades is gonna make a difference. I want three blades, just like my razor that I don't use because I never shave my face fully. It just gets buzzed like this. That's what it looks like. So what does this lens weigh? It weighs in at 0.72 pounds or 325 grams compared to the, oh my Jesus, this is a monster. Holy monster. This is the 35 1.2 from Sigma that weighs in at 2.4 pounds or 1,090 grams. Yes, that is a monster lens. This is a 35, this is a 35. I'll just let you know this is 1,500 bucks. This is $639, so you're probably not buying this if it's out of your price range. We'll get into that more by the end of this video. Close focusing, 10.6 inches, if that means something to you. But now, let's jump in to the photos. And as always, you can download sample raw files over on the website so that you can pixel peep to your heart's content to decide, is this lens for you? Starting with this portrait. So we've got some nice eyes right here. These eyes have cried 
a hundred tears for you. I got hurting so bad. He's just like a bird, man. That guy sings so well. He's so good. Jimmy's brother. Jimmy, Jimmy's brother. He just sings so well. Thanks, Stephen. Um, yeah, I mean, this is at F2. The eye looks fine. It's close enough to me. I mean, the colors, the tones look fine. Uh, now's a good time to say that the, there's stepping, the regular stepping motors. They're not hypersonic motors. Will it be the fastest focusing thing in the world? Eh, probably not. Did I notice that I was missing because of the focusing motors? No, I didn't. And I was shooting with the A7R4 from Sony. Colors, tones look perfectly fine on this. Let me cut in here real quick because I want to show you Fro-Pak 3 in action on this photo, starting with Fifth Element. Then we've got Almost Famous, followed by Canadian Tuxedo, and then Capone. Just look how good Capone looks. But there's a few more that look great. We've got Gotham for People. We've got King Contrast. We've got November Rain, Prestige Worldwide. There are a lot of them. Now, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. Over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to pick up Fro Pack 1, 2, and 3, you can get the triple play bundle and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. This is with the 1.4 of the little kid's feet. The kid was one month old exactly. That's with the 1.4. This is with the F2. You don't really notice that much of a difference. But what I will say that I noticed is that the 35 1.4 does just seem to give you a, a nicer feeling color, a nicer just crispness all around, just like clear edge to edge. And that's probably part of it is that if you shoot this at F2, you may be getting a little more vignetting. It is a little darker. Will most people notice the difference? And the answer still is no. But I did notice when I put them side by side, one that was done at 1.4 with the 35 1.4 versus one that was at F2, you could actually see see a little bit of difference. For example, we've got this shot right here. This is at F2. Look how cute that baby is. Look how sharp it is right on the eyes. Now I'll just give you a little tip here. The kid that's a month old, he'll never like they move around so much that if you wait for that right moment where it will look like they're calm and they're looking at you, they're not actually looking at you. It just so happened they were moving and then they just settled right here for a second and then went back to being like, I'm a month old, I don't even know how to control my body yet, and so on and so forth. But this one's at 1.4, and I know his head's up in the light just a little bit more, but look at the difference in the tones. The tones are tremendous, and at 1.4, it's fantastic. But again, the price difference, I'm moving this over here, Steven, I'm letting you know that right now. This is a $1,400 35 1.4 from Sony. This is a great lens, this G Master. But this Sigma, for people that don't want to spend $1,400, that have maybe $639 to spend on a prime lens that they want to throw in their bag, I, I can't, you can't go wrong with this option. It's going to get the job done. Me personally, if I had to choose between these two, I'm going with the more expensive G Master just because that's what I want to go ahead and shoot with. I think it's going to give me better results and I get that 1.4. The everyday person, you don't have to worry about it. For me, more of the decision is, do you go with, wow, look at that, they line right up, bing, bing, bing. For me, it's deciding between the 35 1.4 versus the uh, 35 1.2, which we have reviews of both of these as well. That's more of the toss up if I want the 1.2 versus the 1.4. But for this one, we're really focusing on the F2. Moving to the next photo, we have this photo. So the basically the scene was, you've got the mother, you've got the father, you've got the one month old baby. Uh, I've got a mask on because I'm being safe. They had masks on just because it just was the right thing to do at that time. And the kid's just doing his thing. I sent them, I, I basically had them sit by the window on the sofa just because that window light coming in was great and that's what I used to get these images and this was more look I just want to focus on the hand so here you have the baby holding on to the mother's hand I'm focused in at f2 because I just wanted to shoot it wide open now just because you have an f2 doesn't
doesn't mean you always need to shoot at F2, but in this case, I just thought it, meant it looked great to just lock in on the kid's hand, just like we did with the kid's feetsies. You know, right there, you got the little baby's feet. We got something in focus somewhere. Yeah, those feet, those toes, all 10 of them, they're in focus. And then this stepping back, more of a photojournalistic shot with uh, Ben sitting there with the baby, just looking and the light coming in. I think the black and white is fantastic. Like I said, this isn't going to be the greatest lens since sliced bread, but nobody's gonna know the difference between one image and the other unless they know what they're talking about or what they're actually looking at. And honestly, I can't tell you the difference between this picture or that picture if you're just looking at it and you have nothing in context of what it was shot with. Because what I care about is, did you get the shot? Are you gonna miss shots with this lens because the lens is gonna hold you back? Most likely the answer is no. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I use for jaredpoem.com because it's simple, easy, affordable, and you don't need to know any coding. Head on over to squarespace.com slash photo to get your 14-day free trial, and if you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. And back to this last photo, I still love this of the baby laying on the chest. Uh, of of his father. Now, if you're in these situations, just try to ch switch out. You've got the mother, you've got the father, you got the little baby. They're gonna look over at you. They don't really do very much right now, but just lock in on the eye and get that focus and get that shot. So remember, you can download the sample raw files over on the website, but I do have two more tests to do. There's the wind tunnel test, and then there's the, uh, the sniff test. We're gonna start with the wind tunnel test right now because something tells me this lens is super light. I'm not sure it's gonna pass the wind tunnel test. Oh my God, it failed. It's the first lens to fail the wind tunnel test officially because it got blown off the counter. It's actually right here. Yeah, that's right. Let's sniff it. Mmm, that diaper smell. A diaper genie. Not brought to you by diaper genie. So who's this lens for? Look, if you've got an A7C, which is this little bad boy over here with a terrible viewfinder, this is a perfect walk around lens on this camera. It's gonna be great for street photography. It's gonna be pretty good for environmental type portraits. You can use it for anything you wanna use it for. I think it is a fantastic option for $639. If you're looking to get a budget prime lens. Sigma has done a great job across the board with the contemporary, with the art, and now with the i-series. So what do you guys think? Don't forget, leave some comments down below. Please like, share, and you know, comment like I just said. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.